Merry Christmas. Jesus, Jesus. Christ. Merry Christmas. The bird, the bird, the bird, baby, the bird, the bird, the bird. Are you getting in the spirit yet? Are you are you the Christmas spirit people are just upholding a nice tradition. Merry Christmas. Who's going to be against happy holidays? It's not about materialism and it's not about things. We're keeping the Christ in Christmas. What are you asking for for Christmas? Um, a fat bag Lego guy. It's his birthday. Oh, 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 oh. And then there's others who are informing us that Christmas actually is nothing but a pagan holiday. And they tell us that our Christmas trees should just be thrown out the window and we should celebrate a completely different time of year. Hi guys, and Shalom. Chris here with Faithful Witness Productions. I'll be your host today as we discover and unravel some of the darkest revelations of the most popular worldwide cultural tradition of Christmas. Every year, during the cold winters of the solstice, where daylight hours commence shorter and less sunlight gathers over the hemisphere, families of the world celebrate on a global scale. Millions of furs are hewn, cut down, and decked with an array of precious colors. Churches galore the landscape with nativity scenes. Holly wreaths hang on the outside of front doors. Carols of particular melody are uttered in the streets. Mistletoes hidden everywhere as kissing is exchanged. Lights, props, and music fill the air of every home and business, circumstantial of the times. Even gifts are brought and wrapped in special arrangement to be placed under the fur. The world seems consumed in a special spirit of tradition and celebration. But what if I told you that this was all a facade? That every aspect, symbol, and purpose of the seemingly innocent holiday was nothing but vanity? What if you were told the truth? Would you embrace it? Would you put aside passion and choose integrity? Let's find out. Christmas is very religious to a lot of people, and they mistakenly commemorate their holy day through the exchange of gifts and in honor of the believed date for the birth of the Messiah. But the problem with that is December 25th has absolutely nothing to do with his birth. Number one, you will not find a single reference to the word Christmas in the Bible, nor any implication that it should be celebrated especially under a false pretense. Number two, the scriptural passage of Luke proves undoubtedly that the Messiah was not born during the harsh, winter cold and rainy conditions of Israel's climate. According to the passage, Luke chapter two, verse eight states, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Christmas time in Bethlehem is the object of frost, rainfall, and extremely cold temperatures. We can even see from other scriptural accounts of Ezra 10, 9-13 and Song of Solomon 2, 11, that abiding in the field never happened in December. Do you really think shepherds would be tending the flock in open fields in this kind of climate? Now, if the Messiah was not born on December 25th, this begs us to question who was. According to the Christian Almanac of 1979, page 17, celebrating December 25th as Christ's birthday, came to the Romans from Persia, Mithra, the Persian god of light and sacred contracts. Mithraism had become Rome's latest official religion, as we later learned in history also had an effectual change on our calendar. And to this quote from the Encyclopedia Americana, 1956 edition states, Christmas was not observed in the first centuries of the Christian church. In the 5th century, the Western Church ordered the feast to be celebrated forever on the day of the Mithraic rites of the birth of the sun and at the close of Saturnalia. 
Unfortunately, as sobering as this may seem, it's easy to identify where and whom Christmas originated from. It was from a culmination of interchangeable worship of pagan deities, from Mithra to Isis to Saturn, and as ecclesiastical politicians gained authority, adopting a pagan midwinter festival as the alleged birth date of the Savior was more palatable. It appealed to the public and interested pagan converts. Keep in mind this was 300 years after the Messiah. More than over 60% of annual retail sales occur during Christmas, and all of this centers around the incredible amount of gift buying. Gift giving and or the exchange of gifts is sincerely believed by most professed Christians to be the Bible's example of the three wise men presenting gifts to the baby Messiah. However, with close examination, we find that the Bible gives no number to how many wise men actually presented treasures to the Savior. Furthermore, it is assumed by many that these gifts were birthday presents, which the Bible speaks nothing about. The wise men did give gifts to the anointed Messiah. They did not stand in His presence and exchange gifts amongst themselves, nor did they arrive at the precise time of His birth. This is another example of a supposed Christian custom that is not centered around Bible truth. What's hypocrisy is that this pagan custom of exchanging gifts is almost directly exclusive to each other. The Savior is not glorified in this kind of selfish practice. Now that we've covered the roots and some of the popular misconceptions surrounding Christmas, let's tackle the basics. Santa Claus, Kris Kringle, good old Saint Nick. Despite what we might think about this jolly old fellow of a character, there is more to his disguise. Today, the word Santa comes from Saint Nicholas, but it was the influence of the Washington Irving in 1809 that helped remake the name of an old zealous Catholic bishop into jolly Saint Nick. Digging deeper, we can find that this side name, Old Nick, has been a term long recognized for the devil, according to Wikipedia. Do you need further proof? Well, taking a look at Revelation 2, 6 and 15, we read about the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which the Messiah righteously speaks out against and hates. Did I mention the word hate? The word Nicolaitan is what stands out. It means follower of Nicholas which is a combination of Nikos and Laos. Nikos means conqueror, destroyer, and Laos means people. So therefore, these are the people who follow the conqueror, or destroyer, Nimrod, which the Bible speaks about. And he has been worshiped as a god throughout history and culture since ancient Babylon. Saturnalia, Christmas is Nimrod's birthday. Do you see the connection here? Yes, you guessed it right, we are going to touch on the relativity of the Christmas tree because it's one of the very intricate aspects of this pagan unholy day. The Christmas tree did originate from Germany, but the Germans borrowed it from the Romans and the Romans borrowed it from the Babylonians who also borrowed it from the Egyptians. Interchangeable pagan worship at its best. Here is a quote from Walsh. Curiosities of Popular Customs, page 242. An old Babylonian fable told of an evergreen tree which sprang out of a dead tree stump. The old stump symbolized the dead Nimrod. The new evergreen tree symbolized that Nimrod had come to life again in Tamaz. Among the Druids, the oak was sacred. Among the Egyptians, it was the palm. And in Rome, it was the fir which was decorated with red berries during the Saturnalia. And if that is not convincing enough, let's grab Jeremiah as a witness. Thus said Yahuwah, do not learn the way of the Gentiles and do not be frightened by the signs of the Shamayim, for the Gentiles are frightened by them. For the prescribed customs of these people are worthless. For one cuts a tree from the forest, work for the hands of a craftsman with a cutting tool. They adorn it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers so that it does not topple. They are like a rounded post and they do not speak. 
They have to be carried because they do not walk. Do not be afraid of them, for they do no evil, nor is it in them to do any good. This is directly mentioned in the Bible, and it is beyond a shadow of a doubt that Yahuwah refers to it as the way of the heathen. And his direct command is to learn not the way of the heathen. And what condemnation follows against those who practice such lawlessness. What is strictly forbidden is also for our admonition and warning. Let us pray. Our esteemed and Kodesh Father, Yahuwah, how wonderful and powerful are your works. For truth and righteousness have been an open veil before us today. The Christmas captivity is real, and the knowledge presented here is undeniable. There is more than enough resources for any believer alike to make a conscious choice. The customs of this people are vain, with such an absorbed grip that the whole world falls deceived. Obedience is better than sacrifice. We pray for your deliverance, and we pray for the guidance of your rule. May our mind and heart be in tuned with this material. That the Baraka, the blessing, will be multiplied tenfold for your esteem. By the beloved name of your Son, the Anointed One.